welcome to my YouTube video. My name is Suzanne Bryan and in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to use three needle bind off to join two pieces of fabric. I show it in the a mono color so it's blending in with your background swatches as well as a second color. I show how to work the uh, three needle bind off by joining two pieces from live stitches as well as picking up stitches from the edge and then creating a three needle bind off in stockinette and garter stitch. There are time stamps up here you can look at so if you want to just jump right to whichever technique you want to see you can just click on that or go to the time along the bottom of the video you can see where you want to you can move the little red button back and forth to whichever portion of the video you'd like to see. Of course the first time you watch it you may want to go ahead and watch it all the way through but then if you want to come back and see a specific technique again you can just jump to that timestamp. I also put the timestamps down below um, the video and you can access those. So here we go this is how you do it. Okay so we're going to start out with two uh, little stockinette swatches with live stitches. We have each on a needle. This is actually a 24 inch needle here and I've just got them on each end of the needle. But you can do it with two separate needles if you want. And you want the either you want the wrong sides facing together so that you would be making the three needle bind off on the outside of the fabric, on the right side of the fabric, or if you want the three needle bind off to be hidden on the inside of the fabric you put the right sides together so that the right sides of the swatches are facing together. I'm going to work this with the wrong sides facing and I left on one of my swatches a long tail so that I could use it for working the three needle bind off. Holding both the swatches together and I have the wrong sides facing each other two separate needles. You're going to use your third needle and you go in the first stitch on the forward needle as if to knit. Go into the first stitch on the back needle as if to knit. Bring the yarn through both stitches one at a time and pull the previous two stitches off the needles. Now you have a new stitch over on the right needle. Then you're going to repeat this process. You go through the front stitch as if to knit the back stitch as if to knit, pull the yarn through, pull those two stitches off the needles. And then you use, whoops, we split this stitch, didn't we? There we go. Then you're going to use one of the two needles, it doesn't matter which one, and pull that first stitch over and off. That's the first three needle bind off stitch. Then you keep your needles even, knit into the first on the front, first on the back, pull the yarn through both, pull the old stitch over the new stitch and off. Now we've bound off two stitches into the front, into the back, pull them off both, bring the first one over the second, it's awkward holding three, three needles when you first start out, but with practice you'll get used to it. And it goes very quickly once you get the hang of it. I'm going slow here so you can see what I'm doing. Now notice that this is making a chain along this edge here. And yes, this does have a right side and a wrong side, and I'll show you that in a minute. So we're going to continue along here. This is working the three needle bind off in a knit stitch. And I'm going to work about halfway across and then I'll show you how to do it purl wise because it is convenient to know that also. Okay now we'll work them purl wise. Bring the yarn to the front. Now you'll go into the back needles, the first stitch on the back needle as if to purl. Bring this needle over here, go through the front needle stitch as if to purl and purl them together. I'll leave the yarn to the back, pull that stitch over and off. Bring the yarn to the front, go through the back stitch on the back needle as if to purl, bring the point around to the front, go through the front stitch as if to purl, and purl them together in one motion, and then pull that second stitch over and off. 
repeat bring the yarn to the front go into the back needle first stitch front needle first stitch purl two together over and off bring this over and off and you just continue till you get to the end and I'll show you what it looks like in just a second. Here's our finished swatch. And you can see now that the two pieces of fabric are joined together. And I worked the first half of that knitwise, three needle bind off knitwise, so you can see the chain of that bind off is facing this side of the fabric. The second half I worked purl wise and you can see the purl bumps now facing. If we turn this over the chains on this side but it's going in the other direction do you see that and here's the pearl bumps so on this side the chain is pointing to the left on this side the chain is pointing to the right this is a really handy thing to know for example if you're working a top from the bottom up and you're going to use a three needle bind off on the outside of the shoulders I like to have them both pointing either towards each other or away from each other to be symmetrical so I do one knitwise and the other purlwise so that they mirror each other. So now the next thing is what if you want to have this in a second color? Stay tuned, I'll be right back with that. Okay, I have taken that three needle bind off out and we're going to start afresh with a second color. So let's see how this looks. It seems like it'd be pretty simple that you're just going to use a contrasting color, right? So let's get all set. We'll knit through the first, go through the back as if to knit, pull the new color through, repeat, front, back, pull the new color through, bind off. Front, back, pull new color through, bind off. Let's do a few stitches and take a look and see what it looks like. Okay, let's take a look. Put this on this needle. What do we see? We see peek through of the color. Do you see the white peeking through there? Let's take a look at the other side. Oh, over here we have bicolored pearls. This is not what we want. So how do we avoid that? Well, we have to take this out and I'll put this back on the needles and then I'll show you what to do. Here you can see that I've worked one row in the contrasting color across both swatches. I use the same strand, so they're connected right there. And I'm just going to fold them in half and slide this one up to this end of the needle, and this one up to this end. So now that I have them in the same position that um, we had the white ones in when it was all white. So now we've got the green and I'm going to use my tail that's connected to the ball, not the tail, but the working yarn and I'm going to work a three needle bind off now and then let's see what this one looks like. Same thing, just same exact thing and you could do this knitwise or purlwise just like I showed on the solid colored piece. This is worsted weight yarn and US 7 needles. And while I'm doing this, I want to tell you also, you know, people always say you have to have the exact same number of stitches on each needle. That is not true. If you have an odd number on one and even on the other, or even several more on one than the other, you can work two stitches together like this. Let's say you had extra stitches on the front needle with one on the back, and it looks just fine. So that is a possibility if you don't have the same number and you need to compensate even if you want to do that on purpose to uh, because you have more fabric on one side than the other that's fine. So I'm just doing the standard three needle bind off across these little swatches 
And let's see what this looks like. Okay, here's our finished little swatch. Let's enlarge this. There's the chain. You can hardly see that last uh, row of knit stitches. Here's the back side that looks like the pearl bumps. We'll open it up. It actually is very, very pretty. It makes a lovely join, a, a way to seam two fabrics together. And in this case, we used live stitches. It does. It is not reversible, does not look exactly the same on the back as it does on the front, but both sides are lovely. So next up, let's talk about doing the same thing in garter stitch. Here we have the two garter stitch swatches. We have to look at these more carefully because it's hard to tell which side we're designating as the right side and the wrong side since both sides look pretty much the same. Whereas when we were doing the stockinette swatch, it's real obvious which side is the right side and the wrong side. So you want to work it so the last right side row were knits. And here's my working yarn over here at the end of the tail. On the back one, you want to have it so that the last right side row is going this way. This is the right side of the fabric with the working yarn over here. This is the working yarn right here. Last row was a right side row. Last row here was a right side row. The work on the front should be where you can see the knits directly below the needle. Do you see that? And the pearl ridge is down a little bit. On the back needle, because we want the wrong side facing, we want the pearl bumps directly under the needle. So that's how we're going to orient these. And we're going to do this with the one color. And get our extra needle here. Okay, same thing. Knit into the front stitch, the back stitch, pull the yarn through, over and off. Exact same thing. Now the reason that we oriented that the way that we did, where you have the knit stitches facing on the front needle, is because if you do this correctly, this new uh, three needle bind off will look exactly like a garter ridge and it's almost invisible for this is really great for like the top of a hood of a on a pullover or pillow tops where you're joining two pieces um, also let's do say you're making a throw or a blanket from a variety of swatches that you're going to seam together. This is an excellent method for joining the squares together. Let's take a look and see what we've got so far. So if we open it up, you can see that it looks just like a garter ridge. Now if I had not placed it that way, if I had the pearl bumps right up under the edge, they would be too close to that and it would not look good. Let me go ahead and finish this and then I'll show you the final product. So here we have the finished three needle bind off and you can see how it just blends in with the garter ridges. That's the front, that's the back. It's a very nice effect for garter stitch and I use this, I have a little um, top, sleeveless tank top that I made in, in garter stitch and this is how I joined the shoulders and I really like it. Now remember, if you want to work this in the two colors, you will need to work the last row, the last right side row on each piece in your contrasting color before you do the three needle bind off. Okay, let's work on the next piece. So how can you use three needle bind off to join two pieces of fabric that have finished bound off edges? There are no live stitches here to start with. What we're going to need to do is pick up stitches all along these two edges and then do the three needle bind off. And since um, I'm going to show you this, I'm going to do it in the contrasting color. That way you can see the whole process much better, but you can do it with the same color 
or with the contrasting color. So the first thing we're going to do is pick up one stitch in each stitch. And you know the stitches look like a V, right? Here's a stitch. I'm going to pick up in the stitch directly below the bind off. So I'll pick up in each V. I'm not going to pick up in the upside down V's. I'm just going to pick up in the V starting on the very edge stitch. So I'm just going to pull a stitch through. You can use a crochet hook to do this or your knitting needle. I used to do it with a crochet hook but I found that I can be quite fast with the knitting needle now. So you just pick up one stitch all the way across. And I'm not going to break the yarn between the two pieces just as I did when I worked the contrast color across the previous stockinette swatches. I'm just going to pick up stitches straight across this swatch and then continue right on to the second swatch. Here's the second swatch. Now you do want to make sure that you have the orientation the same. I started with the bind off edge on the top of the first swatch and I'm starting with the bind off edge at the top on the second swatch. And I'm just continuing straight across from the first swatch so there's no gap in the working yarn. It leaves you two less ends to weave in when you're finished here. And I'm just going to pick up all the way across here. Again, I have the swatches oriented so that the wrong sides are facing each other. Or you could do it with the uh, right sides facing each other. It doesn't matter. You can do it either way. If you do it with the wrong sides facing each other, the bind off will be on the outside of the fabric. If you do it with the right sides facing each other, the bind off will be on the inside of the fabric. So let's get our third needle here and you just do the same thing. You're just going to, it's always worked the same, you work the first stitch either knitwise or purlwise. Also it doesn't really matter whether your working yarn is coming from the back needle or the front needle for the first stitch, it does not matter. And you're just going to bind off in the same manner. So I'll show you the finished product. I'll be right back. Isn't that pretty? Very nice finished edge. Now on the inside of this one you do have those bound off edges pushed to the inside so it gives you a little thicker seam here. This is the first one we did, the inside. This is smoother because we used live stitches but sometimes it's not convenient to use live stitches so you can pick up a bound off edge or you can pick up the cast on edge. It doesn't really matter. They look pretty much the same on the outside. You wouldn't be able to tell the difference unless you felt the fabric. The last set I'm going to show in this video is uh, joining two pieces of garter stitch that have already been bound off. And we can see the, bind, the right side of the bind off or the chain stitch, these would work bind off knitwise, is on this side of the fabric. And so we want both pieces face up in that orientation. If you pick up stitches from this side, you're going to get a big gap between your three needle bind off and the garter uh, rows down here and it just won't be very attractive. So you want to start with the um, chain visible on the bind off and we're going to pick up a stitch in a stitch. Now in garter stitch, the way you can see a stitch is the pearl bump that looks like a frown. Can you see that? Do you see the frowns? Those are the stitches. The parts that look like smiles, those are the bars between the stitches. We want to pick up in a stitch. So I'm going to go right above that pearl bump. I'm going to start over here on the edge and pick up a stitch. And then I'll use those pearl bumps. I'll go right above it so that I'm picking up a new stitch through the center of a stitch and not between them. So I find the pearl bumps and you can see the stitch there. That's where I'm going to go all the way across. Now again, just like when I said earlier, let's say you have a piece that has different number of stitches on each piece. Just You can either pick up the same number by skipping one as needed 
Or when you get to the bind off where you're doing the three needle bind off, you can just combine two stitches together on whichever side you need to decrease the stitch on. So I'm going to go ahead and pick these all the way up across just like I did the other swatches. Okay, so I've got these oriented with the bind off edges towards the center. And again, you could do it in the opposite way. You could put the swatches like this if you wanted to, if you want the three needle bind off to be on the wrong side of the fabric. I like to use it as a decorative edge, so I'm going to do it on the right side of the fabric. This front stitch is loose because that was my starting tail. We'll tighten that up in a second. Tighten that tail up. Okay. And I'm just going to work across this swatch the same as we've done on the others. Once you get to this point, it's the setup that's important. And the first few stitches are always a little bit awkward, but once you get going, it's pretty smooth and goes really quickly. So I'll be right back. And there you have the three needle bind off from a picked up edge on your garter stitch swatches. Isn't that pretty? Here are the bound off edges there on the inside. Again, this makes this a little bit thicker. We can compare it to this swatch. You can see here on the inside how you really don't even have an interruption of the garter stitch. Isn't that amazing? On the outside is the bind off. Very pretty. This is just in a contrasting color. Same thing. Only this was worked with a picking up stitches off of a finished edge. Now you do not have to do this in a contrasting color. Of course you can do it in the same color as the background fabric. You just would use the same color. If you enjoy watching my videos, be sure to give me a thumbs up down there. There's a place to hit the thumbs up. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Leave a comment. I try to answer all my comments. Share my videos with your friends. I have a second video coming after this one that's going to show how to join rows to rows like a side seam using three needle bind off in one color and two color in stockinette and garter stitch fabrics. You can join me in my groups on Facebook and Ravelry. They're called Knitting with Suzanne Bryan. We have a lot of fun. I do a lot of tutorials. In fact, this goes with a tutorial called Cable Pillow Tutorial that's available for sale on Ravelry. I'll put links down in the bottom in the description. If you're on your iPhone or a tablet, there's usually three little dots up here that you can press to go down to the comments. You can also slow the speed of the video down or speed it up. Or if you're on your iPad or your computer, there might be a little down arrow over in here you can press and it'll take you to the comments underneath here so you can see what people are saying. Be sure to come back and visit me again. Happy knitting!